Okay, law number two of deductive reasoning is the law of syllogism. Um, the law of syllogism says if P implies Q and Q implies R, then P implies R. Um, or if, uh, it's kind of weird to do it with if then statements because then you have to. If, if P then Q and if Q then R, then if P then R. That sounds a little bit hard to say that. That's why I say P implies Q. Um, now this should actually look kind of familiar because this is essentially the transitive property um, of equality, but in like in statement form. So when you look at the law of syllogism, or you think law of syllogism, what you should think of is transitive property. Okay, the transitive property is, is if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. So we can kind of write it out. Something like this. That you might be a little bit more familiar with. This is the same idea, but with conditional statements. Um, the format, that, or what you're looking for, if you're trying to spot this, or if you're trying to, to see, you know, uh, if if you're, somebody's actually using the law of syllogism, is you're going to see the conclusion of the first statement is the hypothesis of the second statement. Or wherever the first statement ends, the second statement picks up with that same statement. All right, so here's an example. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Okay, well that's a conditional statement. So we can kind of map this out, right? If two angles form a linear pair, they are supplementary, right? So this is like a P and a Q, All right? We know that's true. Second statement, if two angles are supplementary, then their measure is sum to 180. All right, that's the definition of supplementary. So this right here, two angles are supplementary. That's the same as this guy. Right? The conclusion of the first statement becomes the hypothesis for the second statement. So this one, we're not going to give it a new letter. We're going to call this Q because it's the same. Angles are supplementary. Right? We're talking about two angles being supplementary. That's the same either way. Right? But then we have a new statement. We haven't seen the sum to 180 yet, so we're going to call this guy. Let me put this down here. We're going to call this guy R, just because it's the next letter in the alphabet, right? L, M, N, O, P, Q, R. So the next statement is just going to go R. Now we have three. Okay. Um, and then the last statement here, this is like, this is where it comes in. So here's two conditional statements that you're kind of like putting together and then skipping the middleman. So the final statement is if two angles form a linear pair, which was P, then they sum to 180, which is R. So we skipped Q altogether, right? Kind of this way, right? A is B and B is C. Then the last statement doesn't have any B's in it at all. If P implies Q and Q implies R, notice we just skip the Q's and we go straight from P to R. But in order for this to actually be the law of syllogism, the, the end of this one has to start the next one. You can't like mess with the order. Um, so if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. If two angles are supplementary, then they measure sum to 180. So let's map it out. Therefore, if two angles form a linear pair, okay, again, this was P, they measure sum to 180. That was R. Okay. So transitive property, but with, with conditional statements. Now, in your homework or, or you know, when you do exercises, they're going to try to trip you up by putting P and Q and then R and Q and try to get you to like connect the dots. But this is the order that it has to be in. So again, the format, the conclusion of the first one starts the hypothesis of the second one. That's, that's the, the giveaway that you're actually using a law of syllogism. Um, so law of syllogism, think transitive property. Um, that's kind of what's going on here.